a world shaped with arcane powers, literally meeting magic earth, Runeterra. In the past, on the eastern end of Valorant, was a fierce warlord that built a great empire. The warlord built his empire in blood and death, and thought his conquest had earned him eternal glory as his mortal life neared its end. But the afterlife he saw was an empty, gray wasteland and fog. Other souls drifted and melted into this empty fog. But the warlord refused. Held together by will tempered by rage and torment, the day came when a coven of sorcerers tried to resurrect him. But he overpowered them and was reborn as Mordekaiser, the Iron Revenant. He succeeded in his second quest of the continent, but his tyranny could only bring him enemies, and seemingly Mordekaiser's era had ended. I refuse to fail. One of the tribes that rebelled against Mordekaiser took hold of immortal bastion, formerly Mordekaiser's, and built a new nation, the Noxus Empire. This is how Noxus Empire came to exist. In this empire, anyone could prosper, regardless of background, as long as they had the aptitude. Because Noxians were competitive in nature, they respected strength the most, and as long as one could make the empire stronger by any means, mages, warriors, commoners, nobles, all could earn their rightful places. And sorceries shunned in other places, like dark magic or necromancy, were also welcomed here. Because of their meritocratic government, so you can be reforged in a glory, Noxus prospered rather quickly. People from all over the land came in sore loyalty, and the success of Noxian military was undeniable. Their strongest legion, the Trifarian Legion, was especially notorious in all of Runeterra. Empire! Battle by battle! So, with their powerful army, Noxus expanded and defeated other cities, offering mercy to those that yield, and crushing those who resist. The army marched to the south of the northern lands, took down Delverhold to advance to the border of Freljord, and also looked upon Ionia as their next objective. In the places that Noxus conquered, Towering structures named Noxdora were built to assert dominance. However, Noxus had no interest in destroying cultures. As long as they garrisoned under the Noxian flag, they could preserve their ways of life. Meritocracy and diversity was Noxus's strength. Because they valued efficiency, although Noxus was once an empire ruled by a king, after a political conflict, vision, guile, and might. The principles of strength and three figures representing each principle now run the country in a triumvirate with the regime named Trifarix to lead Noxus into glory. And so, being one of the mightiest nations of Runeterra, Noxus's blades are still sharp and its conquest is still ongoing. Meanwhile, south of Noxus, where the seas of east and west intersect, was a harbor city named Saw. Its location naturally made Saw a hub of trades. Hextech, a combination of magic and tech, and chemtech, chemistry plus tech, had also originated here, making Saw a city of commerce and innovation. But since the seas that surrounded the poor city was a hazard zone filled with reefs and storms. It required sailors' great skill and even some luck to get through. So the innovative scientists of Zon planned to construct a canal that would connect the seas. The great project took decades, and the grand opening day finally came. But what waited for the people was a grand tragedy. With a series of explosions with causes unknown, Thousands of people lost their lives, and an immense amount of poisonous gas leaked into the city. At this moment, a forgotten, 
yet faithful guardian of the sailors, who was forgotten over time as the city prospered. Janna came to save the city. At once. Answering those who cried out for salvation, she swept the city with an immense gale of wind, and the toxic gas was blown away. But because of the fissure that came from the explosions, most districts sank underground, and this led to a great change in Zong. Seeking a way out of the pollution that filled the underground, people built piltover on the higher grounds. And so, Zong, once was one, was divided into piltover on the surface, and Zong in the undergrounds, and prospered in different ways. Piltover was still the heart of commerce. Thus wealth flowed into the upper city. And so, the city rebuilt itself in an unprecedented boom. The merchants that drowned in gold funded development of arts, architects, and craftsmanship. And so many bright minds rushed to the city, accelerating the growth of Piltover. And this made Piltover a pronoun of science, academia, and hextech. Although the Council of Few Nobles inevitably led to some corruption, they were law and order to be enforced. This stability led Piltover to innovate constantly, and the city grew to be ever more cosmopolitan. Zong, on the other hand, had a different story. Existing in perpetual smog twilight, the entire city was like a giant slum, and the lowest areas were polluted and dangerous. Yet the citizens of Zong were eccentric and ambitious. What led the Zonites like so was, in fact, freedom. With no regulations whatsoever in Zong, many goods of Piltover found their way to black markets, and inventors never had to question morals here. Notably, Chemtech that utilizes the toxins of Zong became just as advanced as Piltover's Hextech, including Noxus that utilize anything for strength. Demands for Chemtech are abundant in Runeterra. Although the reckless industry worsened the pollution, and Chembarons, the ruling class of Zong, basically ran the city as a corrupt corporate business, rather than a fair society of order, the denizens of Zong still collectively take pride in the freedom I guess Zong Mom was offers. Right. The bigger they are, the faster they system. So Piltover and Zong developed in completely different ways. Although they are divided by altitude, probably since they were once one, the two states share a symbiotic relationship, bringing advancement to Runeterra. The oldest lands in recorded history of Runeterra, the land of enchantment and harmony. The first lands, Ionia. Because this land was closer to the border of spirit realms, Life and spirits were abundant here, and people of Ionia respected nature. Even when building housings, instead of cutting down trees and making plants, Ionians would convince the trees to grow in house-like shapes, a culture embracing nature, magic, and people, allowing diversity to races, ideas, and species. Especially the race of Astaya had in fact originated from the borders of spirit realms. They require a supply of magic to thrive like humans need water. So naturally, most Vastayas found home in Ionia. However, they were displeased with the way humans used magic, and sometimes directly opposed them as well. Because Ionia valued harmony over all, there was no central government or militia. Most areas had their own regional administrations, and remained neutral even when all of Runeterra was at war. Although many schools of martial arts were there, their intentions were not to hone blades in battle. Instead, they sought to better understand themselves through meditation. The Placidium of Navori and Hirana Monastery are the most noted places for those seeking enlightenment, as well as being the most sacred landmarks of Ionia. Of course, this doesn't mean they lacked force whatsoever. The clan dedicated to the preservation of balance, Kinko Order of the Kinko Temple, meditated conflicts between Runeterra and the spirit realm, 
If and only if necessary, the Order did not hesitate to use force. But not many events in Ionia actually required that. Although many had tried to invade the First Lands, but a mysterious storm would destroy their supplies, and the deep woods would confuse these intruders, leaving them dazzled. Meaning the Ionian land, in itself, was magically fending off invaders. But this balance would be turned over entirely with the invasion of the Noxus army. Noxus was nothing like the other invaders. The nature of Ionia tried to stop the army, but Noxus would respond with a chemtech bomb from Zon to obliterate the lands entirely, and this caused many people and wildlife to perish. The Ionians realized that just defense wouldn't solve anything, and united as one to defeat these invaders. And after a long war, the people of Ionia succeeded in fending off the outsiders. Yes. But the Noxian invasion had forced Ionia to reassess its place in the world. The philosophy of maintaining harmony with nature dwindled. People were divided, some as traditionalists, enforced equilibrium, and some became extremists that sought power and order. Balance is a fool's master. Ionia is becoming forced to take a stand. And so, the future path of Ionia is as of yet undetermined. South from the lands of Ionia were many isles scattered over the seas. The most notable one is Bilgewater, a lawless port city full of outlaws. The government of this vile city were gang syndicates for a start. One would see dead bodies in the streets every day. The entire city was like a giant wreckage built with whatever people could bring or steal, and its inhabitants barely survived each day from many dangers, and black markets selling all sorts of things were active 24-7. Records say Bilgewater was home to an ancient civilization, but only scarce traces of that civilization can be found today. One wouldn't be able to picture bilge water without the water. Massive sea monsters were a constant threat in the waters around bilge water. So people formed hunter fleets and harpooners of skill to hunt, harvest, then render down these massive monsters. And this became a key industry of bilge water. Various religions also emerged in bilge water, with the Nagakaboros faith of the Buru people being most notable a god of life, growth, and most importantly, perpetual motion. On with. Nagakaboros is usually depicted as a giant kraken. Like so, all kinds of people and ideas found home in the lawless port city. Free from the shackles of government regulation and constraints. A dirty blade for a dirty job. Bilgewater was a land of opportunity for the ambitious with coins. But at the same time, one could never know if they'd be alive after daybreak. Even further to the south from here, there was a place even more dangerous than Bilgewater. The place known as the Shadow Isles. Once called the Blessed Isles, the Isles were rich in culture. But a series of unfortunate events turned the Isles into a domain of foul, undead wraiths. The black mist that emerged consumed the entire isles, and if a meek mortal wound up here, the race would come to devour it. And even being in that domain, one could feel its life being siphoned. Oh, lost souls. If that one was to die within the mist, one would become a part of the mist to be damned forever. The worst part was that the shadow owls grow stronger and seeks to spread its terrible curse upon all of Runeterra. Every few years or so, the black mist was spread to other regions of Runeterra. People called this the harrowing. There was no set cycle, so people had no means to prepare, and those slain by the harrowing would be dragged to the Shadow Isles. Surely a fate worse than death. Even now, the richest spirits hunger for more souls to devour, and wait quietly in the shadows. 
there are more places and realms in League of Legends. Deep in the jungles east of Shurima, there's a nation that allowed no outsiders and secluded itself for thousands of years. Only recent events had revealed this mysterious nation, Ishto, wielding great elemental magic. Oh, your primitive magic is adorable. Celestial realm where the celestials and aspects reside, and Bandol city of the spirit realm that also had many secrets to unfold. It is widely known that Bandol city is home to the Yordles, but nothing much more is known about the place. There were many pathways there in Runeterra, but the pathways would only open in particular circumstances. Only one thing is known for certain. Time flows differently in Bandol City, thus giving Yordles a timeless nature. The Yordles that crossed over to Runeterra would assimilate to their environment with jovial nature and would live long enough to witness different eras. So many Yordles that ventured into Runeterra became key figureheads in historical events of the planet. Shurima, Freljord, Targon, Demacia, Piltover and Zaun, Noxus, Ionia, Bilgewater, Shadow Isles, Ishtol, and Bandol City. Many factions and locations were revealed in Runeterra. How many more mysteries does this vast world hold? And what stories could the champions tell us? The stories of League of Legends merely might have just begun.